Hello and welcome to Saturday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where you may see me faced with a blank Sudoku. And that is because Mark has sent me an email uh, containing a link to today's Sudoku, which he wants me to open live on webcam. So that is exactly what I'm going to do. Um, so in fact, I'll do it now and then we can get that out of the way. So this is going to be Sudoku guy reacts to puzzle. <laughs> um, so I click this, I click that, control V that, and then we go, here we go. White Room by Philip Newman and some cages today. So let me just quickly read the rules. Uh, what? <laughs> no way. Well, sorry, the rules are norm, as far as I can tell, normal killer Sudoku rules. Now, why does that surprise me? Well, there are not many cages here. Hang on, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. No, this is absolute, I almost said a set, I almost swore then. Um, this is absolutely not possible. Uh, and the reason I know that is that, uh, well, uh, a little bit of Sudoku law. In order to have a unique Sudoku, that means a Sudoku with only one solution, a unique classic Sudoku needs to have 17 digits at least in it in order to be solvable. Now this is only giving information about 18 cells in the grid and it's not giving us digits. It's not the same as if we'd, you know, imagine we'd filled in, we knew the contents of every single one of these cages exactly. Then we would still only know 18 digits in this Sudoku and it would still probably be an incredibly difficult Sudoku. Here we don't even know, you know, I don't know the order of the 1, 2 and 4 I know go in the 7 cage. There is no way that solves. Absolutely no way. Um, so I suppose it's called White Room, which does actually make it seem like... Philip's having a little joke. I don't think it's a reference to Cream and Eric Clapton. Uh, although if I have my wah wah pedal, and if this did ever become a video, I would like, uh, I would like to do that intro. Um, I'll do the usual thing. I will spend a couple of minutes looking at this in hope rather than expectation. But I think I'm pretty certain that there's been a mistake made on this, which is a great shame. Uh, but we'll get it put right, and I will, well probably not in this video but I'll do another video where I'll explain what happened when I actually opened it. So um, anything else to mention before I reach the rules which I've sort of already done? Not really. Get over to Patreon. There is a whole load of stuff over there that you will love if you have any interest in puzzles at all. We've got Jovial Sudoku Extravaganza which is 20 approachable Sudokus and we're heading, I can't remember what number of correct entries we've had. It's something like seven or 800. It's a ridiculous number. And we have free on Patreon, the murder mystery Sudoku hunt as well, um, which is the work of Alice, um, No Feet McGee and others. And it is going down a storm. So there is some, some wonderful goodies over there right now. Um, and you can find them if you click on the links under the video. So the video description contains lots of interesting links. Uh, that will take you to places that will fulfill your dreams. Now, the rules of this apparently are normal Sudoku rules apply. I suppose it could have been missing a rule. If it's missing something like a knight's move rule, I will totally believe this is possible. Well, we'll keep an eye out for that. If it looks like we could get somewhere with knight's moves, we'll start employing them. Um, in cages, digits must sum to the small clue in the top left corner of the cage, and digits cannot repeat within a cage. So that is normal killer Sudoku rules. Um, well, anyway, have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video. Now I get to play. Let's get cracking and see how we go. So there are lots... I mean, the one good thing about this is that I can totally see the options for many of these cages. A seven cage in three cells is one, two, four. A 17 cage is eight, nine. In fact, I get a digit there, that's a six. Um, that's gotta be eight, nine in order to make the six, eight, nine add up to 23. That's a one, two pair. That has two options. It's either six, nine or seven, eight. These things, well, they all have to be relatively low digits, but they 
Well, we're already a bit stuck, aren't we? Um, is this... <laughs> I keep thinking this is just futile, to be honest. Um, we've got... got a lot of six cages here so these are ones twos fours or fives eights and nines it's ah that square yeah okay that square's got to be a six or a seven so that square's got to be an eight or a nine and that's because there's an eight nine pair in this row so this square cannot be eight nine and in order to get to 15 we're either looking at six nine or seven eight so we know oh maybe i color these I'm going to try that. Okay, we're going to colour in some nines and eights and see what that does. So let's make that purple and that green. So that must be purple. That must be green. That must be purple. Oh, that didn't exactly take us um, take us very far. Oh no, hang on. That is purple. Okay. Ah, that's purple. That is actually a little bit interesting. Now there's a purple in one of those two squares in box one. Oh, good grief, I must swore again then. Uh, that is now purple. The, oh, this is really very, very cool. I don't believe it. Look, we've got all the <laughs> we've got all the purples. It's a bit like the miracle Sudoku. Um, Apparently, you can just place all the purples because purple is such a restricted digit because eight and nine can't go in, obviously, these small cages. Um, you can apparently place them all. Now, let's see if we can do something with greens. Green has to be in one of those two squares. Oh, you can. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. It's actually... Oh, this is ridiculous. You are kidding. If I tell you this now, if this solves... This, this could quite easily be the greatest discovery in the history of Sudoku. And I am not employing hyperbole there for just for the sake of it. This would be ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Is this, I don't believe it. This is still going. How many greens have I got? I've got you can get all of the greens and all of the purples through colouring. I haven't needed a knight's move yet. But, on the other hand, I haven't actually got any digits placed. So, I don't think I'm going to be able to do anything else. Can you do anything with this six? Does this six work some magic somehow? Six is going to have to be in one of those two squares because it can't be in a purple or a green square. It doesn't look great, does it? Um, oh, okay. So maybe, maybe I was getting excited about nothing, I'm afraid, because I can't actually... No, you are joking. No, 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 no. <laughs> six it can go in a whole multitude of places in boxes three and box six but those places are all interesting this six lock you can't put a six in a six cage because i can't put zero in either so the six is in one of those squares now look where it's got to go in box three it can't go in these squares because they're too small so it's in one of those squares so now six is not placeable in any of those six squares in column seven which means six is in one of those two squares in box nine and if six is in one of those two squares it's most certainly not here and actually i'm going to get digits from this i'm going to get a seven and i'm going to get purple is now eight green is now nine and I, and now the puzzle is look well i'm not going to say it's looking solvable because it simply isn't but it looks more populated than it once did um oh good grief you are kidding i can place seven in box three i can place seven in box this is a discovery of absolutely extraordinary proportions it 
And just for the record, I still don't believe it. Um, so I'm, what I'm seeing now is that this seven locks a seven into one of three places in box four. And well, if we look at where seven can go in box one, it's got to be in one of those five squares. So again, seven coming down this column looks interesting to me. Seven, well, seven's got to be in one of the bottom dominoes, which I, yeah, okay, it's not a massive, a massive step forward. Oh, please let this work. Please let this be doable somehow. Um, yeah, okay. Now where does seven go in this column? It can't go here, it can't go here, it can't go there. It definitely can't go in a five or a six cage, so it goes here. Whoops, not one, that's a seven. That's a seven. I, <laughs> I don't know how many times I've said so far that I don't believe it, but I don't. That, there's a seven in one of those two squares. Okay. Okay, I think... We might have run out of room with sevens, but maybe I go back to sixes again now. Yeah, yeah, okay, I'm going to do the same thing again on column six. Where does six go in column six? It's not there, 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 or here. So it goes there. Six and six go in. Six goes here. A lot of sixes. Six, six, six. Where's Damien? Um... How many sixes have I got? The answer is a few. Now, uh, if the six is in one of those two squares now, it's not in those two squares, is it? So it's in one of these two squares. Six is in one of those three squares. Mm, okay. Um, we've, we need to place threes, fives, and ah. Uh, where does seven go in this column now? So seven's got to go here. Oh, so there's an X wing on sevens left in these squares. Those two squares are a three, five pair. This one, two is rather beautiful because that's pointing a one, two into box seven into those two squares. So we still need threes, fours and fives into these. Ah, I've got a three, four, five triple in box four. So that's... Ah, so I've got a one-two pair in box four. No. Okay. And what do I do now? I still haven't actually, other than using these sort of negatively, I've not used these cages at all. I've used them to say you can't put sixes and sevens into them, but I haven't actually used their real contents. So maybe I can do something with those. Sevens, sixes, just let's check whether we can do anything more with sixes. Six, mm, I don't know if I can. These squares have got to include threes and fives. Ah, is that, yeah, okay, well that's a little bit interesting. Yeah, okay, there's a four in here, there's a four in here, so this square is a four, which means this is not a four. Four is in this domino. F no, these are three, five, and seven. And this four is another digit in the grid, so I want to make it make it sweat somehow, but maybe we can't. Um, I'm tempted to pencil mark these in. Let me just, I think I will do that if you don't mind. I'm not a big fan of putting in lots and lots of pencil marks, but I just want to take a stare at this and see if I can see anything. You see, you do almost get, you almost get a quadruple in column seven. But this three, this rogue three is annoying and ruins it. If this was just one, two, four, that would be a quadruple. This would be a three and we would be away. Um... Ah, yeah, no, I do see. I do. Ah, well, I see something. This square. This square 
is interesting. Right, let's have a actual think about these digits here. And it's it's very peculiar. It's like a a swordfishy type thing, I think. In the sense that we know that a five cage has a one or a two in it. We know a six cage has a one or a two in it. And we know this cage down here has ones and twos in it. So what we can't do in these four cages is to have the one and the two in the same column. If these were both one, two, this would have no fill. If these were both one, two, this would have no fill. So that means one of these two squares is a one or a two, and one of these two squares is a one or a two, which means that there's a virtual one, two pair in column six between these three squares, and there's a virtual one, two pair in these three squares in column seven in in the outline cells, which means this square is not a one or a two, which means that square is a one or a two. And and that means that means that this square is not a one or a two. And that square is interesting if you look at row six of the grid, because if this square cannot be a one and one or a two, and it can't be, where do one and two go in this row? Those two squares. Now I've got a one, two pair in this column, which means these, this is just absurd. This, oh no, I've broken it. No, I haven't broken it. I thought I'd broken it, but, and I nearly did. I put the ones and twos there without realizing this was a one or a two. I can't do that. I can't put three cells in this column. Oh, but this square can't be a one or a two, of course because that's in a column with a virtual one, two. So there's a, one, a virtual one, two pair there, ruling out one or a two from this square. In fact, let's fill in this square. This square has to be three, four, or five. This one or a two means there must be a one or a two here and a one or a two here. And I must be getting close to the point where I can color the ones and the twos. That's the ultimate aim, I feel. Um, oh, maybe I can. Er, not sure. Not sure if I can. I think I'm going to try. I think I'm going to try just in case we can do something with this. Because that one now must be blue because it's definitely not red. That one goes over there to become blue. This one becomes red. Oh, yeah, look, look, it works. It works. Oh, good grief. You get red here. And if you get red here, this one's blue and this one's red. And now that one's blue. And now, um, and now maybe something else will work. Um, what might that thing be? I don't know. Red, oh, hang on, red is over there. Yeah, okay. Because red is in one of these three squares, the ones and the twos in this box are obviously locked into that L-shaped tetromino. So this can't be a one or a two, which means this is a one or a two. Whoopsie. Um, and that color, do we know that color? Yes, we do, because we've got the blue in the column. That is red, so that's not red. Now this square can't be a one or a two because we found a one, two pair in the column. And of course the corollary of that is that this square is a one or a two, which makes it blue. Now that square's blue because I need to put a one. I need to put a blue in in the seven cage because we know it's got a, it's got both versions of one and two in it. Well, that's the only one that can be blue now. So that's blue, which means this square is a four because it can't, and that means that square is red, and that means this square is red, so it's not six. And how many blues have I got? I've got. Ah, no, I haven't got a blue there, but I can get one. That's blue. I haven't got red in box one. It's in one of those two squares. And I think one, two, three, four, five. Ah, no, and I've not got that blue, obviously. So now I have got every blue and I've got seven reds. And I'm just left with these two. And... How do, but how do you disambiguate them? 
How are we going to know which way round they go? I know how. It's this four, isn't it? This four sees... Ah, oh, this is... So this is five, which makes blue one. Now red is two. Now I have to get rid of the twos from there because they we don't know about those yet. And this five is meaning this is not five. The, oh, a C. I see. And now we get some disambiguation with digits in this cage where we get a three and this cage where we get a five. Which means five is now in one of those squares. Five is not here anymore. These three squares are two, four and six. Which means those two squares are, yes, three and five. In other words, given we've got a five here, we know the order. That's five, that's three. These two squares are a four, six pair. And somehow we might be able to go further. I'm not sure. Yeah, well, we know those two squares now. And we know this square. Because of this three, this is four. So these are a three, five pair. Don't think we can resolve row seven yet. This square's a three or a four just by Sudoku on row, row six. And that means this square is a three or a four by Sudoku on column six. But have I, I have used, apparently this is a Sudoku now. That's what it is because I've done all the cages. So this should just be an exercise in careful elimination. <laughs> um, let us see. Three, five, and two into those positions. Ah, this is a five. It's a naked single. That's lovely. So now I get a two, three pair here. I can place the five in box two. I can maybe place the five down here. Let's have a look. I know the five is in this domino. I don't know if I can do that. Maybe not. Um, four, six, seven here. I think I'm going to end up with a fully pencil mark grid. Now this square, this four is interesting. That gets rid of an option from that square. That, in fact, the six gets rid of an option from this square. I get left with two, four, six, all doubles. This square is two. Ah, no, this square is three or six. Can we do it? I don't know. Ah! Right, what about those squares? We've got to place three, four, and... Oh, it's threes, fours, and sixes again. There's just loads of three, fours, and sixes. That can be anything, I think. Three, four, or six. Um... And these squares, which are the final ones, are going to be awarded with pencil marks of three fours and fives and that can't be a five so we've got three four six seven oh yeah okay that's all working we've got three four five six oh good grief i've really not done very well at all in this column and i uh, see this might be where it gets tricky there's two possibilities i've missed a simple el elimination which is very possible or it gets tricky and we're going to have to find something clever. Um, and if we do have to find something clever, I really pray it's not monstrous. Because this Sudoku has been such a gorgeous thing to solve so far. Come on, find something, Simon. Uh, I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing it. Where shall we look? Um... I'm looking for, I'm, I'm actually looking for X-Wings, but I'm not seeing anything at the moment. Let's, ah, come on. Sorry, I'm so sorry if you've spotted something and I'm doing this a disservice. I am desperately trying not to. Fours. Triple three. Ah. Yes, got it. I've got it. Um, these three squares. These three squares and this little square are a bent triple. Well, these three are a bent triple. So let's actually um, 
well, I don't think I need to colour them in or not. I'll make them yellow just to highlight them a bit. But this square, if you look, if these were all in the same column of the Sudoku, they would be a 3, 4, 6 triple, and we would understand exactly what they meant. But look at this middle square here. If this is a 3, this square is a 4. And if this is a 6, this square is a 4. So one of these two squares in the finished grid must be a 4. And if one of these two squares is a 4, what can this square be? Answer, not 4. If this is 4, the puzzle breaks. So it's not 4, it's 3. Which means that is 4. Which means those are not 4. Oh, I see, and that gets us over there. 2, 6, 4, 3. Please, please just finish now. Um, there's 4, there's 3. We can get rid of the 3 from that one. Oh, we've got a 4, 6 pair here now. So this has become a 3. That's a 5. That's a 3. That's a 4. That's a 5. That's a 7. That's a 3. That's a 4. That's a 5. That's a 6. That's a 4. That's a 6. That's a 7. That's a 2. That's a 3. This is a 4. This is a 6. This is a 3. This is a 5. And we click tick. Oh, good grief. That is absolutely mind-blowing. That is mind-blowing. Oh, my goodness me. Hang on. Let me just get rid of the colouring. Um, let us just get rid of the colouring and re-highlight the only information we were given in this grid, which is those, those cages are enough 18 cells of cages are enough to create a sudoku as beautiful that was such a joy to solve it really was from the start where the eight nines can all be penciled and then i can't remember what digit it was was it the six that somehow found its way around the grid it was it was the six over here the fact that th this little square is so powerful because once this square became a nine the six in this box got locked into those squares, which forced it in down here, which forced it out of this square. And all of a sudden we had we had digits. But from there, it was still gorgeous. The whole thing was got the idea around the ones and the twos in these columns is not it's not simple, but it's not mind bendingly hard. And yet it's still, you know, <sighs> I am lost for words, Philip. That is an absolutely extraordinary thing you have. I don't know whether you, I don't know whether you found it. It's it's like one of these puzzles that it just exists in nature, and Philip has discovered it and unearthed it, like you know, in Raiders of the Lost Ark. Um, this is the Lost Ark of Sudoku. Quite quite unbelievable that it exists, uh, and that is a privilege for me to have a chance to solve. Thank you so much. Uh, for sending that to us and I hope I did it justice um, and we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.